And what we are going to look at is we're going to have a look at the carbon footprints of some of our favourite foods today. And we're also going to look at whether we can reduce the impact of the foods that we're eating. We're going to have a look at some other simple swaps that we could use to reduce our impact. And we're going to look at how to introduce some alternatives into our diets that might have better impacts. But first of all, I want you all to think about what are some of your favorite foods? What do you like to cook? What do you like to eat? What do you like to bake? Feel free to pop some answers in the chat. I can see that we've already got some things coming through on the chat, that's brilliant. So for me, I really like chips. Fantastic, we've got some good answers coming through. So just at the moment, thinking about what you like to eat. Fantastic, we've got a few, few pizzas, roast dinner, burgers, cookies. Yeah, some absolutely great answers here. So what we're going to look at is what can we, what can we swap out? What could we do with these foods? So what we're going to look at next is we're going to do a quick task. At the moment, this screen looks very busy. Don't worry about that. At the moment, we've just got some examples up. We're going to go through what we're about to do before we look at this again. So don't worry about how busy the screen is at the moment. But on here, we have some examples of food. We had burgers was one of the um, things that people said. I know there's some sausages on here. There's some cheese. I can see a tin of baked beans. Uh, I love to eat beans on toast for my breakfast sometimes. So we can see quite a few different foods that you might be used to. And there might be some things that you don't recognize. What we're going to do is we are going to consider these things. So when we look at food, there's some different things to think about. The first one is the production. Now, what do we think that means when we're looking at production of the food? I know it says on the screen, but what, what do you think that could be? What's happening in the production part? So if we're thinking about our food, when it's being produced, sometimes, when we're talking about plants, so when we've got our vegetables, that's got to be grown, yep, farmed, perfect. So a lot of food is farmed. So when we need to produce food, that takes quite a lot of energy, a lot of water, that takes land. If that's, to, um, if that's for food with animal products, that takes even more land, even more plants, need to be grown to then feed those animals. So production is the largest part of that. That's the, the largest thing we need to consider at 45%. So production is nearly half of what we need to think about when we're looking at how impactful our food is. So how much of an impact our food has. Processing is the next thing. Who's heard of processed food? I'm sure lots of people have heard of processed food. So when food is processed, it's often made into something else. So that can be when we uh, preserve food. So if it's pickled or smoked, that could be making it into something else. So when we take wheat and turn that into flour, or when we take the flour and bake that into a cake, that would all be considered processing. So that is... <laughs> Can we all just make sure we've got our mics off, please? If we've got any questions, pop those in the chat. Any point, we'll try and get those answered. So the next thing is the transport. When you get your food, that has got to come from where it is grown to the shop that you buy it from and then home to your house. That takes up 20%. And then packaging, and I'm sure you've heard a lot about food and packaging, especially plastic packaging. That is only 7%. So what we're going to look at now is we're going to try and put those foods that we just looked at in order. So here are the foods again. So we've got 
all of those options. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're about to do this. So when we look at this, we just said that we have 45% as production. So we can take these things that we've just been looking at and try and have a go at putting them in order of their impact. So don't worry about this busy screen. On the bottom of this screen, and I'll just point that out to you, down here, we've got a list and we need to go through that and try and have a go. So try and have a go with the first one. We will do that together and then we'll see if you guys can pick a couple of options and see if you can work out the impact of that food. So with fresh bread from a supermarket, it isn't seasonal fruit and veg, but it is made of grains. So we could say that that has, for production, 20 points. Then we look at the processing. Simple bread that you make at home might only have one to five ingredients, but the bread you tend to buy from a shop has more than five ingredients. So that's another 20. Then we have Transport. So the bread that we buy from a supermarket is usually produced in the UK. So that would be another 12 points. And then the packaging, when you get fresh bread from a supermarket, that usually comes in lightweight plastic. So that would be a further two points. If we add that up, we get to 53 points, which would be a medium impact. Let's see if people can pick a couple of these options and have a go at um, rating these, see if we can find the impact. I'll open up the chat. So I know there's a few groups. See if you can pick a couple of these options and add them up. Feel free to write your answers in the chat and we'll go through some of these answers shortly. This exercise will help you to see how much impact some of your favorite foods might have. So if any of these were your favorite foods, pick that one and see if you can work out the impact it might have. Going to wait a little bit longer, see if anyone comes up with any answers in the chat. And then we'll go through some answers together. Fantastic. So we've got one answer in the chat. I don't know if everyone can see that, but I'll just give this example as well. So seasonal veg from an allotment or a garden. And the answer here is also added up each section so we can see where they've come from. So production for seasonal veg would be 10. Processing would be, it hasn't been processed because it's just been grown in a garden, would only be five points. Transport. If it's been grown in your allotment or your garden, then it's been grown less than 30 miles away. If it's in your garden, then you haven't had to travel to collect that. So that's got the lowest transport impact. And it doesn't have any packaging and that would be 20. And then I've got another answer, brilliant. We've got beef burgers coming out at 80. So we can see the difference between our seasonal veg, which was coming out at 20. And fantastic, we've got some beef burgers coming through with really high scores. And then the, the uh, supermarket fresh bread was coming out at 53, which was still medium impact. So we've got some fantastic answers there. Looks like some people have had a really good go at that. What we're going to do next is we will have a look at the impacts of each of these foods. So what I want you to do whilst we're going through this is think about 
Is anything surprising? Is anything where you thought it wouldn't be? Does anything have less of an impact or more of an impact than you thought? And I want you to have a think about whether you'd be able to swap any of these foods out for any of the ones that are of less impact. So down the green end, these are going to be the low impact foods and up the red end, we're going to have the high impact foods. So we'll start off, seasonal fruit and veg could be if it was grown on an allotment. We said on the previous slide could be 20, but we've got this here at 23 to 24 assuming that this was bought from a shop. Then we've got our dried lentils, nuts and beans. So these are our dried beans and lentils. These are really, really good for swapping out for some things. Let's see if anybody can think about what they might swap for lentils. They use lentils instead of. We'll see, come to that in a bit and see what you can come up with, guys. So then we've got our almond milk. This is milk made from nuts. Comes out at 39, still really low impact on our scale. And then we've got a tin of baked beans. Now here we had our dried beans and then a little bit further up, we've got our tin of baked beans. So when we package and transport baked beans, they've been more processed than our dried food and they have added liquid so they're heavier for transport so a few things add up here to make the tinned beans higher impact than the dried beans then we've got our bread so again depending on where you buy this bread from whether you buy fresh bread or whether you buy pre-made bread this can have a slightly higher or lower impact and we'll look at some things that have ranges of impact in a bit so here we go, we've got our out of season fruit and veg. So this is when you're buying fruit that's normally grown in summer, in winter. So what this means is it usually has to be grown with a lot of energy. So this means that it has a higher impact than the fruit and veg that's grown in season. Here we have our vegan cheese. So this is cheese made from things like coconut oil, this still has a medium impact. We're still above 50 here, and this is a scale up to 100. Then we've got our vegan spread. So our vegan margarines, vegan alternatives to butter. So this is where they don't have any animal products in. Still medium impact. And then we have our vegan sausages and our vegan burgers coming out with very similar medium impact scores. And then we have our dairy milk. So this is milk that comes from cows, has quite a high impact in comparison to the almond milk that we looked at before. And then we've got dairy cheese. Now we're into the high impact. So that's up at 79. Dairy butter, up at 79 to 80. And then we get into our meat products. We've got pork sausages, beef mints, beef burgers. And I can see that some of the answers you guys came out with are up here as well. So don't worry if your answers were slightly different, depending on where you buy these things from, whether they come fresh, frozen, how many ingredients they've got can change these scores slightly. This is just an idea to give you a bit of an idea how much impact each bit of your food might have. So on here, can you see anything, anything on the high impact that you might be able to swap out for something that's lower down the impact scale? Pop it in the chat if you've got any ideas. What might you be able to swap out? Fantastic, we could swap butter for non-dairy spread. What else might we be able to swap? Dairy cheese for vegan cheese, fantastic, yep. See if there's any more, yep, we've got 
So we can swap our out of season fruit and veg. Yeah, so we've got a few people saying we can swap the meat alternatives for the vegan alternatives. So someone said, could we swap in chicken rather than beef or would that not change the impact? And we'll come back to this one on the next slide because that's a really good point. And we'll have a look at that as well. Yeah, so we could swap our burgers for our vegan burgers. That would make a lower impact. That would be fantastic. But there, there's still more swaps that we can make and we'll, we'll be having a look at this. So there's some great ideas coming through. So we'll have a look at the next graph we've got here and it looks a little bit scary at first if you don't know what it's telling you. What this graph is telling us is that for these foods here, so we'll look at beef first, the lowest impact that beef could have is fairly low, but the highest impact that beef could have is really, really high. So somebody said, could you swap out chicken for beef? So you see here that chicken does have a lower impact. However, when we're looking at this impact compared to stuff such as beans or lentils and nuts, these plant-based alternatives still often use less resources and therefore have lower impact for the protein that you're getting. If you did swap out chicken for beef, so if you had chicken instead of your beef, that would still be a lower impact meal. However, it would be even lower impact to swap your chicken out for something, say, like chickpeas. So we've had some fantastic answers coming through. We've got some really good swaps there. So I know for me, when I went vegan, the hardest thing for me to swap out was chocolate. I really, really liked milk chocolate. And as you can see here, chocolate can have a really, really low impact. But chocolate can also have a really, really high impact compared to what the lowest impact is. Do you see here that chocolate's actually the plant that's made it highest up this list? And that's often because the chocolate that's grown where we have high impact comes from where they've cut down trees in the rainforest. And that then makes it quite bad. So chocolate was one of the hardest things for me to give up. But actually, it took me a few, a little while of working out what the good, what the good options were for me. Yep, dark chocolate. And actually, there's some dark chocolate out there that's really, really good. So there's a lot of things you can swap. And we're going to have a look at that in a bit more detail now. So we've got some alternatives. So already people have said we can swap meat and dairy for plant-based items. We've had some other fantastic answers. So this is one thing that I do all the time. And you remember when we looked at our scale, lentils were low impact, but beef was really, really high impact. Lentils, when you're making things like spaghetti bolognese or um, anything that you can use mince for, something like a shepherd's pie, lentils work brilliantly and they take in all the flavour. So we could try beans instead of chicken. So we said that already. I often use chickpeas because they have a very nice taste. Some people already said this, we can try plant milk alternatives. So we had the almond milk. Can anyone think of any other plant milks that we might use? Coconut milk, oat milk, fantastic, yep. Soy milk, brilliant. Really good. Rice milk, yeah. Pea. There's so many plants we can make milks out of these days. Oh, somebody said goat's milk. Goat's milk is actually still an animal milk. This is taken from a goat. Um, so if we were looking for plant alternatives, we would want to try the things like oat milk, soya milk, coconut milk, pea milk, there's some absolutely brilliant 
alternatives out there now. And you guys have done a really good job there of remembering some of those. So we can swap vegan, uh, swap cheese out for vegan cheese, or we can use something called nutritional yeast, which has a cheesy flavor and is very good for you. And here's some other things that you can do. So remember when we said that buying um, seasonal veg is better, so you can buy local and seasonal. Can you think of anything else you can do to make a better alternative? Anything else you can do to lower your impact that I've not got on the screen here because we've got some great ideas that you've already come up with. What else could you do? What else gave things a big impact when we were adding that up? The biggest thing was production. Yeah, that's a really good point. Instead of eating things like crisps, which are processed, packaged, come in lots of packaging. You could eat some nuts instead. Fantastic, we've got a great answer in the chat. So we've got, we could also try eating less processed food. So can anyone remember what I said earlier on processed food was? Let's see who can remember this now. Yeah, brilliant. That, um, so somebody has just said you can make from fresh where possible. Yes, if you've got fresh seasonal vegetables, you can. Another great option is frozen. So frozen vegetables can fill the gap. It is sometimes difficult, depending on where you are, where your shops are, to find what you need at the time. I live in a city and when the shops are empty, the shops are empty. Uh, perfect, yep. Buy fruit and vegetables that are loose rather than packaged. Um, are plant foods better for your health too? Um, there are arguments for plant diets being better for your health. There are some plant-based foods that are better for your health. But I think the main thing is that when you start to make better impact choices, you often also open your mind up to better, healthier choices. So eating beans and lentils is incredibly healthy. It's a lower fat diet, but as with any diet, if you're still eating a lot of processed food, it would still be a poor diet if you're eating a lot of the, the burgers and the um, processed cakes and things, even if it's plants. Perfect, so if we avoid processed food. So there's a lot of things that we can do. Yeah, so there's, there's lots of things that, that people forget when we're talking about plant food is that things like donuts and chips are still plant-based food. You can still eat quite a lot of unhealthy plant-based food, but you can also make a lot of healthier choices. So here we've got a quick quiz. So which ones of these are things we can do to improve our impact? So which ones of these are things that we can do to improve our impact? Feel free to pop in the chat the answers and we'll go through these in about a minute and I'll read through them one by one. So number one. Eating foods that are lower on the food chain, which means eating more plant-based options with less or no meat. I'll read that through again. Eating foods that are lower on the food chain, so more plant-based options with less or no meat. Is that something we can do to improve our impact? Number two, choosing foods that are produced with less water. Is this something we can do to improve our impact? Choosing foods that are produced with less water. Number three, eating foods higher up the food chain and what that means is eating more meat. So that one was eating foods higher up the food chain, which would be eating more meat. So someone's just said, what do you mean by the food chain? So when we look at what animals eat, when we look at a food chain, we would have 
the first thing would be what the first animal eats. So we would have perhaps grass, and then we might have a rabbit eating that grass. Further up that food chain, we might have a fox that would eat the rabbit. So if we were eating plants, that would be lower down the food chain. And if we were eating foods that were higher up the food chain, that would be meat. Number four would be buying food locally where possible. So that would be buying food locally where possible. Number five, buying all frozen processed food. So that one was all frozen processed food. Number six, buying food from far away. And number seven, which is picking fresh foods with the least processing. So I've got some answers through on the chat. Brilliant, we've got some great answers through. So we will start having a look at the answers now. So which ones are the ones that we can do to improve our impact? There was a good point raised on the chat that I will come back to in a moment as well. So the first one is something that we can do to improve our impact. So if we eat more plants and fewer animals, we would be having a lower impact. Choosing foods that are produced with less water is also something we could do. Using less water would mean less of an impact. Obviously eating more meat would be worse because we remember seeing that the meat was always the higher impact foods at the top of our um, impact scale that we looked at earlier. Buying food locally where possible, that was a good thing to do because remember when we had a look, the transport was still quite a big chunk of the impact. So buying all frozen processed food would not be something that would help our impact. Remember the processed food is often higher impact than the less processed food. Buying food from far away, also not that great, but someone did make a very good point about this in the chat and I'll come back to that in a moment. And picking fresh foods with the least processing is a good thing that we could do to improve our impact. So somebody has said, although we have a lower impact when buying imported plant foods compared to buying locally because processing has more impact than transport. So that's why we have to have a look at this scale because sometimes when we, um, when we do import things from other countries, when it comes via transport that isn't flying, it can still have a lower impact the locally produced meat. So that is very important. So if we are buying food that comes from far away, but it still comes out lower on our scale, it can still have a much lower impact. So for example, soya. Soya isn't really grown in the UK. So we have to import any soya products that we have. Interestingly though, the majority of soya consumed by humans, I'm pretty sure is actually consumed in meat products and processed meat products. So we had another point here that said oat milk has a much lower impact than almond milk, but both are lower than dairy. Can anyone take a guess why they think that oat milk might have a lower impact? Yeah, that's another great point. More than 90% of soya grown grown by humans is eaten by animals, usually the animals that are then used for meat. So a lot of the soya. Okay, so someone said it's got a lower impact because it's plant-based, but both, are, both oats and almonds are plants. So what do we need to grow plants? What do plants need to grow? Perfect. So they need water and sunlight, but almonds 
have a slightly higher impact than oats because they use more water. So there's lots of things to consider. And this is what we're starting to think about today is we don't always know the answer because we have to think about the rest of the things that are around growing what, what makes our food. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a look. Yep, yeah, and again, almonds are grown in the USA. Most of them are grown in the USA. Oats, we do grow them in the UK. And you'll often see when you buy a bag of oats, they'll say Scottish oats. That's because a lot of them are grown in Scotland. What we're going to do now is we're going to watch this quick video. And I want you to have a think about the questions on the side. What swaps did I make in this video? And what effect did this have on the impact? So what swaps did I make in this video? And what effect did that have on the overall impact of my meal? So I don't think anybody said, I think a few people said pasta, but I don't think anyone said bolognese. But I know a lot of people like bolognese and it's a fairly common meal for people to make. I make it quite a lot and this is how I would make it. So make sure you're thinking about these questions when you watch this video and I'll take the question, any questions in the chat and any answers afterwards. most commonly done with mushrooms, but if you didn't like mushrooms, you can swap these out. Quick tip here, if you put onions in the fridge half an hour before you cook them, they'll make you cry less. Like I said, if you're not using the mushrooms, these can always be swapped out for something else. Remember that we're looking at what we can swap out. We can always swap things out in recipes to other things if you don't like them, or if you're wanting to have less of an impact. So if I was making a traditional bolognese, I would have used beef mince. But what swaps have I made here? Here I'm adding yeast extract. When I used to make spaghetti bolognese years ago, I would add an oxo cube, but now instead I add yeast extract. Why? And I can tell you this was a very, very tasty spaghetti bolognese. So in the chat, what swaps did I make? I told you one of them.
Lentils for beef mints, yep. Lentils instead of mints, everyone seems to be getting that one, brilliant. And what did that do to my impact? And someone has just asked, what can we use instead of Parmesan cheese? So someone has answered that in the chat saying BioLife is a vegan hard cheese, and they do, it's exactly like a Parmesan, very good. You can get some um, other alternatives that are like Parmesan, other brands as well. If you don't want to have the high impact of the processed vegan cheese, you can use, and I mentioned this earlier, nutritional yeast, and that tastes quite cheesy and it's really good to pop on top of pasta. So I used oil instead of butter, yep. So I used olive oil, I didn't use butter to fry things. And I mentioned something else that I swapped out. Instead of using a beef oxo cube, I used yeast extract. I put carrots in, yeah, yeah. That adding a few vegetables often helps with the flavor as well. Um, so adding, adding the carrots will add a little bit of extra flavor and extra nutrition. Um, yes, you can use veggie stock instead of the extract. Um, using yeast extract, uh, it often has extra vitamins in. And one of the vitamins that people who just eat plants lack is B12. And that is in a lot of yeast extracts. So I buy one that has a lot of B12 in. And I use that to give things a um, fuller flavour instead of using things like stock cubes but yes you can use veggie stock instead of the yeast extract you can also use gravy granules um you could use fresh tomatoes instead of a tin um i'm not sure you'd get the same saucy uh, texture from using fresh tomatoes but you can make your own tomato sauce from tomatoes so what did my swaps do to the impact of my meal So we said that I swapped beef out for lentils. Yep, it lowered the impact. It probably lowered the impact quite dramatically, probably lowered it a lot. So we're going to have a go at doing these swaps ourselves. We'll have, have a look at what we're going to do. We'll have a look with an example first as well. So what I would like you guys to do is build a meal making some swaps to have a better impact. Using the swaps that we've discussed to swap out parts of your meal. So what I would like you to do is have a think about what you guys said your favourite foods were. It doesn't matter if you do your favourite food, you can use an example that you know you can swap something out of. So I want you to very quickly draw a quick picture of your meal. We don't have to be artists about this. You can just draw very quickly and label what things are. Then I want you to tell me what you have swapped out. And then I would like you to tell me what difference does your swap make? And how will that change the impact? So we'll have a look at an example. So this was my spaghetti bolognese that I've just made. And we have our pie chart up at the top. So remember, production was the biggest. That's the thing that has the most impact. Then we've got processing, which was 28%. Transport down at 20% and the packaging only counts for about 7% of the impact of the meal. So my meal is a lentil bolognese. I've cheated and I put a picture on, I didn't draw this. So you guys will have to draw a very quick sketch of your meals. And as you guys noticed, I swapped mints for brown lentils. So I use lentils instead of mints, as they are not processed, bought from a refill shop, and my lentils scored a 32, as they would have come from outside the UK as well, so they would have had to be transported. And some lentils are grown in the UK by some companies who are trying to grow things that we wouldn't normally grow with lower impact in this country. So there are some good companies that do that. We could potentially mention some of those a bit later as well. But my lentils were bought, uh, bought from outside the UK. They did come from outside the UK, so they scored 32. Mince is 
B, and that would score at least 75. So if we have a look at this whole meal, I've made a big difference just by swapping out part of the sauce. So the environmental impact of my lentil bolognese is less than a mince bolognese because the production of the beef would be much more than for the lentils. Even though the beef might have been UK beef, everything else for the beef is larger than the impact of the uh, transport. So the transport impact is lower for the beef, but everything else is much, much higher. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to tell me what your meal is and what you're swapping out. I want you to tell me why you're swapping them out, how it will impact the overall impact of your meal. So what are you swapping? What are the differences in the impact and why? So what I've done here is at the bottom, you can see the activity. So it tells you what you need to do. And here I've put up the same thing we had up earlier, how to score your food. So I'll give you guys a few minutes and then we'll see if anybody would like to share what they have done and see if you can sketch and label your meal and swap some options out. That will mean you guys will have to remember what we were looking at earlier. So remember that we said there were some really good options. You can swap out mince for lentils. You can swap out chicken for beans. You can swap out any dairy items for non-dairy items. So see if you can apply this to one of your favorite meals. So we've had an example in the chat already. So if we had a full English breakfast, we could swap the sausages and bacon or veggie sausages, veggie bacon, or we could have veggie or lentil fritters. We could still have the mushrooms and the baked beans and non-dairy spread for butter. Yep. Someone else has said use vegan cheese on pizza. Yep, really good. So we're getting the, the swaps through. So once you've decided on your swap, describe the difference in your swaps and explain what this will do to the impact of your meal. Some really good answers today, guys. And some really good things in the chat. Yep, we can swap out vegan butter in. Uh, we can swap out butter for vegan margarine. Remember there were swaps you could make with your vegetable produce as well, your fruit. So if you're eating fruit and veg, remember that that is best off being seasonal. What that means is that it's grown in that season. So things that are grown in summer, you should eat in summer. Things that are grown in winter, you should eat in winter. So it all depends when those particular fruit and vegetables are harvested. And we've got obviously the swaps we've also talked about today. Brilliant. So someone said that they've done vegan pizza and they've done the score and that came out lower yet yeah, because it would have a lower impact because of swapping the cheese. Brilliant. So talking about the cooked breakfast again, someone has said they can have tinned tomatoes when it's not in season. And when tomatoes are in season, then you can have fresh ones, which is a really good point. Another fantastic point, you can have oat milk instead of cow's milk in cups of teas and coffee. And I can tell you that oat milk is brilliant because I, I drink that when I'm at work. I work in a coffee shop and I drink a lot of oat milk in my teas and coffees. And a lot of people, or no milk, yeah, a lot of people also drink black tea or coffee, which is what I do at home.
we also had the point earlier that you could swap out your milk chocolate for something like dark chocolate. Yep, chickpeas in the curries. Almond milk for baking cookies. Yep. A lot of vegan margarine is really, really good for cooking now. A lot of them have got really good. So has anyone come up with a lower impact meal that they think they might want to try? I know some people have uh, calculated the impact of their new low impact meals. Can anyone describe the differences? So what was different about the swap you made in terms of our four boxes on the screen? So. Yep, so this one, these people have designed their own homemade vegan pizza. So instead of buying a frozen one from a supermarket, brilliant so if we swapped that out so it would no longer be as processed it would still be processed because there'd still be a few ingredients but it would be much less processed and you'd have your vegan cheese which again this would have much lower production value but it's still fairly processed but would still have a lower impact than our dairy cheese, so really, really good answers. So I hope that most of you have realized that it isn't an easy answer to approximate the impact of your food. We've got to think about this when we're thinking about what we're eating, because not everything comes out where you'd expect it to, remembering our impact scale earlier. But there's often things that you can do with your meals to make a better choice. on your environmental impact. So remembering that production is the largest. So if you eat any beef, lamb, cheese, or butter, you're already into your, well into your medium impact because this from the production already has 50 points. So the biggest changes that you can make is trying to eat seasonal fruits and vegetables, trying to eat items that are less processed and locally grown and in season. Packaging makes up a very small amount of the impact of your food, but it is still important because when we think about where this packaging is going, it's still something to consider. So earlier on, somebody said buying loose is better. Of course it is. If you don't have to throw away any packaging, that's always, always better than having to throw packaging away. But if it's packaging on beef burgers, the impact of the beef burgers is going to be much, much higher than the impact of the packaging. So these are things that we need to think about when we are looking at our food. And I can see some people have done some great examples. They've got some great examples in the chat. I hope you have drawn some pictures of your meals and you're thinking about the impact that these different swaps would make. So we've got quickly to finish off. Now you guys have done that task. There were some fantastic answers. And to finish off, we've got a quick true or false quiz to see how everything was going. Brilliant. Yeah, we've got a couple more answers in the chat. So before we move on to the true or false quiz, does anyone have any questions at this point before we quickly run through that and see what you guys have learned from this? We've got a couple of people who've said options. So we could use, instead of using a dough-based pizza, we could do cauliflower crust pizza with veg and vegan cheese, which sounds very tasty. And on a roast dinner, you could do a nut roast instead of having roasted meat. Nut roasts can be very, very tasty. So I'm not getting any questions through. So I assume everybody's excited for the true or false quiz. 
You can either write your answers down for yourself or you can pop them in the chat as we're going along. It's up to you guys. I'll keep an eye on the chat. So true or false, beef is a low impact food. So remember you can be doing this yourself or you can post the answers in the chat. If you're in a group, if there's a class all together, you can come to an answer together and one person can type it in the chat. Brilliant, everybody's coming through with the right answer here. And that is false. Number two, a plant-based diet will have less of an impact than a diet with meat. True or false? So a plant-based diet will have less of an impact than a diet with meat. Getting some answers through again. And this one. So a plant-based diet will have less of an impact than a diet with meat is true. Number three, dairy is a lower impact food than dairy free alternatives. So dairy is lower impact than dairy free alternatives, true or false. Get some great answers through again. And this one is false. Most people put that answer in the chat, well done. Next question, number four. If people choose more plant-based options over meat, the impact of their diet will decrease. So if people choose more plant-based options, the impact of their diet will go down. Getting some answers through already. Brilliant. So this one is true. And this one, number five, might be a good idea to have a look at the picture next to it. But Number five, nuts and beans have some of the lowest emissions per serving. So nuts and beans have some of the lowest emissions per serving. And this is when we're talking about proteins. Perfect, so yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, we've got some fantastic answers coming through. Yep. Yeah. So this one is true. Dairy and meat are lower impact than plants. So dairy and meat are lower impact than plants. Fantastic, getting answered through really quickly now. Great. And some of the higher impact, so that one was false. Everyone's doing really well at this. So number seven, some of the higher impact plant-based proteins still emit less than the lower impact animal proteins. So remember, we have our plant proteins mostly down the bottom and our meat animal proteins mostly up the top. So some of the higher impact, and that's the red bit here, plant-based proteins are still less than the animal proteins. Getting some answers through already. This is a harder question to understand. So some of the higher impact plant proteins still emit less than the lower impact animal proteins, fantastic, some great answers coming through. So that one is true. So we remember that here, this here is still lower 
than the lowest impact of these animal proteins up here. And I think this is the last question, nuts. Nuts are a low impact source of protein. And just through the chat, I think we just got uh, to say a well done to, yeah, well done to year four, is it Trevor Burn Academy? Apparently they've listened really, really well and really understood the impacts of their food. So well done you guys, well done to everyone who has been listening along. I really hope you guys have taken something away about the impact of your food and maybe think about some changes that you can make. So we've got some great answers through here and that was true. So there's some questions for you guys to think about now. I think we're running out of time. So this is our summary. These are for you guys to think about. Well done to everybody who's been listening along. Hopefully we've all taken something away from this. It isn't easy to approximate the impact of your diet, but we've had a look at some quite hard stuff today. And maybe you can take something away from this. What can you do to reduce the impact of your diet? So absolutely fantastic. So uh, well done to year six at Kenmont as well. I think everyone's done a fantastic job. We've had some brilliant answers in the chat and it's obvious that people have been listening and really learned something here today. So well done guys, it's been really, really good. If there's any questions, feel free to ask them. Um, if there isn't much time left, I think there will be, um, is, is there going to be a link that questions can be sent to, potentially, if there's, if there's anything that people come up with afterwards? Yeah, I just wanted to come in yeah, here and say it, it's it's 12 o'clock now, so we really need to finish. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm getting yep. so hungry looking at all that food. So thank <laughs> you very much, Bryony, for that. Um, we um, will... but, uh, year three at Whitefriars School have been listening along really well as well. So yeah. they're going to try and uh, lower the impact by eating more vegetables. Very good. Fantastic. Can't have too many vegetables. So I just want to say thank you very much, Bryony, for that really interesting and engaging session. Um, we will be contacting all the people who have participated today with a little survey afterwards and obviously if you want to send any other questions through you can send them to me um, info at s4s.org.uk um, so I just want to thank everyone for your participation today and to remind you that we do have some other events on during this week. Brian is back tomorrow um, showing us uh, what the environmental impact is of washing your hands and how she makes soap, which is really interesting. And then we've got um, Martin, who's going to look at recycling plastic, and what he does with that. Um, Thursday, we've got a really interesting one about does war cause climate change? Does climate change cause war? And then on Friday, I'll be looking at some um, STEM career information. So hopefully I'll see some of you again later on in the week. Um, I just wanna say thank you very much and enjoy your lunch, whatever you're having. So thanks very much, Bryony. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you, Bryony, that was brilliant. You need to get off, don't you? Yes, thank you. All right, see you later. Bye. Bye.